All right, so real quick, just wanted to let you know, uh, 9 o'clock Eastern Time on this channel, I will be doing my analytical power ranking show live. So I'm going to be doing it live. It should be fun. So make sure you uh, check that out. Uh, so that I figured, you know, that could be a fun way to do it. So again, 9 o'clock Eastern, check it out. And anyways, back to your regularly scheduled video. All right, let's talk some Tua. Uh, listen, Tua got a lot of criticism after this game. Uh, I'm assuming people were still asleep uh, and missed the, at least the first half of this one because Tua played pretty well in this. I thought Tua was good. Uh, I think this is one of be Tua's better performances. Now, there were some negatives, you know, the interception. We'll get into all that stuff. But I thought that as a whole, this was a very promising performance from Tua. And this is maybe a glimmer of hope that if you do improve the rest of the offense, Tua can be good. So listen, uh, I think that, you know, I've certainly been on the I'm not sold on Tua train basically since he entered the league. However, at the same time, like you got to give him a fair shot and you got to call it how it is. He was good in this one. So if you are a Tua believer, like this is reason for optimism for sure. He's still a young guy who's barely played uh, and he's had some good moments. This was one of them. So let's start things off with this one. What's going to happen on this play is that this is the play where basically it's designed for a Miami defender to just find a gap in coverage somewhere along this play. It's a cover three zone that they're going up against and, you know, just sit down uh, and hopefully Tua can hit you quickly and you can gain some yards. Right when this play starts, so you're going to see Tua, you know, uh, he steps up in the pocket, but there's some contact right here. So uh, you have some contact and this is kind of the thing that's, quite frankly, it's plagued Tua for his career so far is when he's on the move, when he has to, you know, when he's under pressure, things like that. That's where he's really struggled. Now, there is a receiver, Jalen Waddle, on this play who he could throw to, right? Because Waddle can start running towards the bottom of the screen. There is a little gap, and Tua is going to take this chance. Tua does make a throw wall contact, and the, you know, the pass is complete there on a third down for them to pick up the first down uh, just barely. I mean, that's really good stuff by Tua on that play, and that's stuff that, I mean, it's difficult to pull that kind of thing off, so there you go. I mean, people want to say, well, all he can do is sort of on-script stuff. Well, this is very much a, he's, you know, contact is being created, he still makes a great play. Although, let's now go over, let's talk some neg negatives for a second. There were a couple of plays, specifically two plays, that did stand out to me as negatives. Other than that, I did think Tua played very well. Um, we'll get into more positives in a second. Uh, but this play is one of them. It's man coverage on this play. It's a single safety deep coverage. And watch what happens. Tua takes a snap, and he's going to eventually get outside the pocket right here. So, good job there. And you see that a Jacksonville defender, who was playing man ends up, you know, the one I've circled in black, he's going to end up now running forward to make sure Tua doesn't run with the football. So that's what he's doing. However, the the difference here is that, so, you know, the line of scrimmage right at the 30-yard line, Tua can still throw it here because, you know, barely, but you can still throw it here as long as some part of your body is behind the line of scrimmage. I've also circled another Miami defender, or excuse me, another Miami receiver. Both of these guys, basically, if Tua hits, you know, either one of them, it's a touchdown probably. But Tua, you know, on, off balance, doesn't really throw it anywhere close, and that's a little bit unfortunate. But again, that's just not who Tua is. Tua isn't this playmaker type who's going to make these Patrick Mahomes-like throws. That's never been his game. His game is very much, uh, you know, on script stuff uh, when things are going well. He didn't, you know, again, he made that first play. That's good. He's never going to be Mahomes. That's okay. We're, we can live with that. Let's now go over to this one. So this is the interception, and the screen is going to be blurry. Not my fault. That's NFL Game Pass's fault. This is the best footage I have. Uh, and quite frankly, this decision is going to be, not the decision, but this throw itself is baffling and confusing to me. So the concept I get, it's a cover two uh, you know, zone that the Jacksonville Jaguars are in. So you have a receiver trying to get into a gap in coverage further down the field. Okay. All that stuff makes sense. Although this is a difficult throw to make because you have to keep in mind, Tua is at the hash marks on the bottom of the screen. This throws all the way up to the top of the screen. So it's a very difficult throw to pull off. And right when this play starts, so Tua runs the play action. And, okay, so at this point, you could argue, hey, maybe make this throw. Uh, this is a tough throw to make. Worth mentioning, Tua has not started his throwing motion yet. Um, 
part of me when I watched this live figured, okay, this has to be a miscommunication. And I do believe it is. What I think is happening is that he is expecting his receiver to stop around here whereas he also sees the corner is kind of running over the middle of the field a little bit so maybe he thinks he's going to keep going that way it's still a baffling decision though Tua throws this right to a Jacksonville player uh, who gets the interception that could have maybe been a completion uh, had he you know had they been on the same page Tua and his receiver still probably not though very very bizarre decision which is unfortunate because I thought he played really well outside of you know the, those two plays, but really this play. The last one, that's not really a big deal. Uh, that one's kind of a tough play anyways. This one, just confusing to me. But all right, now for some positives. Let's go to uh, this one. This was awesome. This was a great play from Tua. It's going to be zone coverage, quarters coverage. Uh, you have a tight end running over the middle. So this is the kind of stuff that can work. However, right when this play starts, uh, you know, Tua's first read was actually over to his right. Uh, so then by the time he gets here, okay, maybe you could make this throw, but he really would have wanted to have made it like, you know, now. He would have wanted to have the ball get there basically now, uh, so it's going to be tough. You know, you have a, a linebacker over the middle, so for Tua, what do, you, what do you do here? I think a lot of people would say, okay, you can't make this throw now. It's too late. Uh, it is what it is. However, watch the touch Tua puts on it to get it over the linebacker, but still in position uh, where you can uh, have a completion there. That's an incredible play by Tua. I mean, that's just fantastic. Tua deserves a lot of credit for something like that. That's something that, uh, you know, I mean, that's a, that's a, to me, that's a highlight real level throw. That's a, just a really impressive throw. And everyone says, well, he doesn't have the arm strength. The arm strength is an issue. And it is. It, it's a fair criticism. However, uh, the stuff like that, okay, you know, I don't see, uh, I talk about Mahomes. I don't see Mahomes making that play, right? That's a, a uniquely Tua making a great play type of play. And I also thought stuff like this, just when the offense was rolling well, like, I think you can make an argument that part of why Tua had such a good day was the Jacksonville defense was bad. And I think that's probably fair. Like, I think Tua is the kind of quarterback where you can maybe make a, a bit of a Ryan Tannehill comparison, another Miami Dolphins quarterback, of kind of needs to be in the perfect situation to succeed. But to me, I'm okay with that, right? Because I've always kind of said, well, I want a quarterback who's going to be great in a good situation. I don't really care how you are in a bad situation because you're not winning a Super Bowl then regardless. But at least if you can be great in a great situation, well, then you could win a Super Bowl. Um, I'm not sure if two is there yet, but this is at least a promising sign. It's zone coverage, and you again, uh, it's going to be a play action with a receiver running over the middle. Right when this play starts, it's not your tight end, but what you see is, I mean, he's open immediately. So this stuff worked. But what I like about Tua is just, you know, how quickly he can make these decisions when things are going well. Look, I mean, he makes this quick throw. They're able to pick up a good gain on this. I mean, this is the kind of stuff we saw in college, right? This was college Tua, uh, you know, for sure. So seeing it now in the NFL, it's very fun. So uh, really good stuff this week from Tua, I think, even though it wasn't perfect you know, who who does have a perfect week? That's very rare. He was very good. So yeah, that's kind of my thought on Tua as a whole. I think an element of it is people are kind of, you know, they're they're out on the Dolphins and they're kind of using Tua as the scapegoat there. But again, Tua's only played a couple games. Uh, this was not a, a Tua a bad game whatsoever. I thought he played pretty well. Uh, so that's just kind of how I saw it. And again, this is this is what you hope for. I think the, the critique of Tua has always been, well, what's his ceiling? Well, if he plays like this for, you know, the rest of the season, that's a pretty good player. That's a pretty good quarterback. So we'll have to see if he can do that. But uh, reason for optimism, I think, for Dolphins fans, despite the fact that everything around Tua has completely gone to hell. Uh, that's the way I see it. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.